the Pompano Beach Seafood Fest 2009. How you doing? We're doing great. It, you know, the weather is cooperating, and with any outdoor event, the weather is the key element that you can't control, and the, the seafood festival gods are looking down upon us because it's been a wonderful weekend. Now, we walked through the food court before. We're going to dig some shots of that. How's the crowd this year? The crowd actually is, today's crowd is bigger earlier than we've seen in the past. Normally the crowd we've seen kind of builds and grows. It really started earlier than we've seen in the past. We had a full house starting at two o'clock. That usually doesn't happen until five o'clock. So, you know, there's a lot there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. For those folks who are not familiar with the Seafood Fest, it's an amalgamation of several charities. It yes. is a homegrown Pompano thing. Yes, it is. How, how long have you been involved? There, I've been involved for almost 20, almost all 25 years. I wasn't involved the first year after that I was. And it started out as the uh, Fishing Rodeos Award Ceremony. And they had the organizers of the rodeo committee had been to the Speckled Perch Festival in Okeechobee and said, you know, we could do that here. And uh, it, it, it kind of grew and grew and it took on a life of its own. And the chamber and the seafood fest and their fishing rodeo worked together. And then we got, it got so big we needed help. So we started reaching out to the local charities. Now the festival benefits 10 local organizations and those 10 organizations aren't only beneficiaries they're very involved in the operation everything from collecting tickets helping with cleanup parking uh, selling uh, adult beverages everything that goes on is all done by volunteers and those people benefit one of the things the Pompano Beach Seafood Fest is known for is this great national entertainment. Yes. This year you have the Class of Rock All-Stars on Friday night and yep. Grand Funk Railroad, yes. right? How important is those mega acts to this event? You know, the, the acts are, are very important because they give you a great deal of, of credibility and draw. Um, Grand Funk Railroad's been with us before, and they, about seven years ago, and they drew one of the biggest crowds we've ever had. So it, it really is a, the music is, about, you know, we've gone from being a, fe a food festival to being a music and food festival now, and that, that really makes it very unique. That, that is wonderful. All right, Rick, we'll let you get back to work. We're going to wander around, harass some more people. Good luck. We'll see you later on. Thanks a lot, Shane. This is Shane Lamar from Local Flavor. We're here with what uh, Robert calls the cute girl, and she's with Olaf from Holland. And what is your local flavor? Oh, it's just sitting over here and having a wonderful time with my family. My local flavor is Gator Bites. My local flavor is funnel cake, and I'm from Sunny Isles. My local is Rum Runners. I'm from Royal Palm Beach, Florida. My local flavor is Grouper. My local flavor is Turkey Leg Barbecue. Mm -hmm. My local flavor is Crab Cake. All right, my local flavor is Rum Runners. Well, welcome back to Local Flavor. I'm Shane, and I'm here with a legend. This is the man, the myth, the legend. It's all true. Hugh Ganter, Seafood World. How are you doing? Wow, I've never had an introduction uh, like that before. Could you go across to the other booth and tell my wife that same thing? She's next <laughs> on the list. She's the next on the list. Hugh, how's it going for you this year? Well, as always, uh, we're very busy, as you can see behind you. Uh, for a couple years now, we've been doing a raw bar. Thanks that we can bring a refrigerated truck in for all our oysters and clams. So we're doing stone crabs, we're doing conch fritters. Uh, I believe I'm the only vendor that's done all 25 uh, festivals. And as you can see, we're doing really, really well. Thanks a lot to John Good and company and all the people that helped put this together. John Good is great. Now, what is the biggest, what is, what's popular this year? What is the most popular thing this year? The most popular thing yeah. right now are raw bar, oysters, stone crabs, seafood vinaigrette, which is a combination of conch, crawfish and shrimp. That seems to be really flying out of here. And now several of us are doing fish and chips. Fish and chips is a standby. Everybody likes, who doesn't like fish and chips, right? I love so, it. I love there it. There you go. Throw a little cocktail sauce in there. Uh, also breaded shrimp is going well. And we got a big, uh, almost 200 pound swordfish, which we carved up and we're almost out. So we're blackening fresh swordfish on the griddle. 
Most of the uh, seafood you serve, is it Florida-based, Northeast-based? Where's most of the water? Florida, Florida, Florida. Oh, Florida. You, you try to keep it so, well, not all of it. Some of the shrimp is imported, but this, oh yeah, we're Florida fresh. We keep it Florida. Our stone crabs are DNA to be Florida stone crabs. Swordfish is out of our local water. The tuna is out of local water. Uh, whatever we, we serve basically is out of local water. Conch isn't out of local water because they don't allow us taking it anymore. So we bring it in from the Bahamas. All right, one last question. If you're gonna give someone, give us a quick recipe, just a quick recipe to prepare one of your dishes. What would you say? Just give us real, real quick. A, real, a really quick recipe, okay. Sesame seared tuna, which is really popular. It's virtually served raw. You just sear it real quick in oil, hot oil on one side, flip it over the other, put it into a little ice water to stop it cooking, and then put on toasted sesame seeds, cut it, serve it with a little bit of teriyaki sauce and, uh, and some ginger and wasabi, and you're in heaven. And Mr. Rick Green will tell you that. That's one of his favorites. Great. Well, there you have it, folks, from Rinside Hugh, from the man himself, the myth, the legend, sesame seared tuna. That's the hibachi challenge. Now, when it comes to the Seafood Fest, there's one place that's incredibly important. It's the beer tent. And we are here with the beer tent brewmeister, Skip from the Fishing Rodeo. How you doing, Skip? I'm doing fantastic, how are you? Great. Now, Skip, they tell me you're the hardest working man at this entire event. Is this true? I don't know hardest working. I think John Good's the hardest working guy, but I pour a lot of beer. You pour a lot of beer? Yeah. Just off the top of your head, okay, how many beers do you think you're gonna pour this weekend? How many will get poured out of this tent this weekend? In the thousands, it'll be. Like five, six, seven? I'd say two, three thousand beers. It's just in our shift. We're here from two to four. Yeah. <laughs> Come on in. Wait, we got. These are all hey, fishing. We got two, so you wait, we got junior player happening. here, too. <laughs> we got junior player. Yeah. We'll, we'll be pouring beer from two to six. It's actually, we're waiting on our next shift, but there's no doubt. We'll and then you'll pay like, you'll pour like 3,000 beer just in your at shift. At least 3,000 beer. They called, they more. said they're going to be late. No, it's good. All right, no, now. That's where they are. Now, <laughs> just with your crew guys, with your crew guys, how many beers would you guys drink throughout the weekend? Two or 3,000. Okay. All right. Now you heard from that himself. This is the beer tent. This is what the Secret Fest is all about. Thanks, guys. All, right, guys. all right, I'm here with Bob Unger, who is just a modest man to most people, except I go back to the days of WBSS 98 Gold. Bob Unger is the genius entertainment director behind the Pompano Beach Seafood Fest. Bob, how are you? I'm fine. I'm recovering nicely. Recovering yeah, nicely. Yeah. Okay, I'm glad to hear you're in recovery. Bob, this week's, this year's lineup, Classic Rock All-Stars, some of our old classic friends, Grand Funk Railroad. Where does this stack up in all the years you've been doing it as far as the billing you brought out this time around? I don't know. I think this could be one of the, uh, one of the best years in that... Uh, between the classic rock all stars with the variety of, uh, of uh, names in that, mm -hmm. you get you get a, an hour and a half of just hits, and then this year it's 40 years of funk from Grand Funk Railroad. They've been at this 40 years, and and uh, I don't know if you were at Pirates World 40 years ago, but I was, and uh, I can remember seeing them hit the stage. And I tell you what, they're better than ever right now. All right, Bob. Big question. After 25 years of doing this. Is there anybody you have not brought in yet that you still want to get done before you do the Bob Unger books written, before you do your memoirs? Who have you not brought in? Well, I would like to bring Shane Lamar's uh, band in, uh, although that might never happen. So <laughs> my second choice, of course, would be Bob Dylan. But, you know, we're going to have to raise the admission fee here a lot to make that happen, and I don't think we're going to do that. So. But I mean, Bob Dylan has always been my musical inspiration, and and I I I, I really go there. But um, as far as as far as like playing all the bands that we grew up listening to, we've just about done that. We've run the gamut over the over the years. We've had everybody from America to the Drifters to the uh, Buckinghams. Uh, um, America, did I say America? You yeah, said yeah, America. Yeah, yeah. Blood, <laughs> blood, sweat, and tears. You know. We're going to have Bob on the show. We'll have him in the studio because Bob has got a million great stories. He was here when the tornado came ashore and flipped the stage. We'll, we'll, we'll talk, pick that up another time. But a serious question. You're like the last surviving seafood fest. Fort Lauderdale's gone. All the ones are gone. You're still a survivor. Why is it that this festival survived where others just could not make it go? Well, I think there's a, there's a certain amount of community involvement in this that makes it go in that it's volunteer driven. The, the, the way this um, uh, festival is set up is that the community benefits uh, from the admission gates and all the sales of everything. And 
the, uh, the local charities and civics groups provide the manpower to make it happen. So that eliminates some high fixed costs that maybe other cities, when they tried to do it, and they had these high, high uh, uh, labor costs, we're on a, on a um, uh, sort of a percentage basis, you know? If we do well, all the charities do well. If we have a year where it uh, rains for two days, you know, uh, everybody takes a little hit, but there's no real, there's no real fixed, uh, fixed costs in it. Way cool. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it, Mr. Great, the great Bob Unger. Bob, thanks for the time. Uh, you're welcome, Shane. It's good seeing you. <laughs>